Hello everyone, and welcome to this presentation of 2D characterization at submicron scale of crack propagation of 17,4 pH parts produced by Atomic Diffusion Additive Manufacturing, or ADAM process. My name is Claire, and I am a first-year PhD student at the Light Nanomaterials and Nanotechnologies Laboratory in France. For this video, I am going to introduce the context and the study's objective through the introduction. Then I will present the ADAM process and the conducted treatment to obtain our samples. The 2D characterization will be detailed after and finally, I can show you the different results followed by a small conclusion and perspectives. The simple principle behind additive manufacturing has raised multiple and interesting techniques to print layer by layer a CAD model. For example, polymeric materials commonly use the fused filament fabrication while metallic materials are more into powder bed based processes, such as laser beam melting or electron beam melting. However, the main concern about these processes is the anisotropy brought by the addition of successive layers, creating a temperature gradient. One of the solutions is to treat the part once printed. Treating the material surface can also improve the mechanical characteristics like fracture initiation. For example, surface mechanical attrition treatment, or SMAT, can enhance hardness and the tensile strength of the material by giving a nanocrystallized layer at the surface. But how can we observe the influence of such treatment at a local scale? Previous studies used the electron beam lithography process to apply at the surface a periodic grating made of nanoparticles and conducted an institute mechanical test under a scanning electron microscope or ECM. Images are recorded, depicting the evolution of the nanoparticle displacements in order to analyze microstructure feature. The same method was used in this study and the main steps are presented in this slide. We have the printing process with the ADAM technique, the mechanical treatment with the SMAT, the nanocage grating deposition through the EBL process, the in-situ tensile test under SCM, and the image analysis after the test. The main objectives are the observation of the crack initiation of propagation of single edge notched tension specimen in order to establish a comparison between an as fabricated and a smatted sample and to determine the influence of such treatment at a local scale. The company Markforge has developed the machine Metallex and its process combines metal injection molding and fused filament fabrication. The name of this process is, of course, Atomic Diffusion Additive Manufacturing, or ADAM. The material used for this study is the stainless steel 17,4 pH, a high-strength metal which also has a good corrosion resistance. The ADAM technique is composed by several steps. First, a wire composed by a polymeric binder and the 17,4 pH powder is heated to the melting temperature of the binder, then the mix is deposited layer by layer to create the part. Then, the washing step is when the printed part is submerged in a solvent in order to remove the majority of the binder and after that, it is put in an oven near the melting temperature of the metal in order to fuse the powder and to evacuate the binder's remain. This is the sintering step. On the left, you can see the geometry of the printed samples with the notch in the middle of the specimen and on the right, the trajectory of the nozzle during the printing process. When all the parts were printed and sintered, they were polished until having a mirror finish and a few of them received the smart treatment. The sample in green is placed at the top of the setup and is maintained while multiple shots are moving randomly thanks to a vibrating sonotrode at 20 kHz. The plastic deformation after the impact between the shot and the surface leads to create a nanocrystallized layer. To complete the treatment, it is necessary to smat the other side of the sample. Many parameters can influence the surface's outcome, but we chose to put what is called a smat high, as the results ensure a good grain refinement and the smallest roughness among all smat parameters studied. It is important to obtain the smallest roughness possible because of the electron beam lithography process. This technique depends on the application of a resin, 
then it is exposed to an electron beam to remove certain areas defined by the user. After the development of the resin, a layer of gold is deposited evenly on the surface. Gold is commonly used in nanofabrication and is a conductive material, which makes it a good candidate for SEM observation. After its deposition, the rest of the resin is removed with a solvent, leaving only the nanoparticles at the surface of the material. The grating design made for this study is quite large for electron beam lithography, but it is essential to cover the tip of the notch to observe the crack initiation. The entire grating is a 400 square micrometers divided into 16 subgratings of 100 square micrometers. Each subgrating is represented in blue and is surrounded by 1 micrometer basic shapes, as you can see below in different colors. All dimensions are shown in the tables on the right. In every subgrating, the nanoparticles present a diameter of 200 nanometers, a height of 50 nanometers, and a periodic distance of 400 nanometers between nanoparticle centers. A number is assigned for each subgrating in order to follow the evolutions during the test. The previous design was applied to the as fabricated sample and the smatted sample, and you can see that both of them show satisfying results concerning the quality of the deposition, despite the roughness implied by the mechanical treatment for the smatted sample. For the institute tensile test, the samples were placed into a tensile test machine in the SCM chamber. Due to the delay for taking one image, the test has to be stopped every 125 newtons in order to capture the whole grating, then each subgrating to have a good following of the crack evolutions until the failure of the sample. After the institute and cell test under the SEM, the results for the test are presented here for the as fabricated sample. The macroscopic stress strain curve of the sample is on the top left, and the red stars correspond to the location of the different SCM images. We are focusing on the subgrating number 3, as it depicts a good insight of the crack initiation. Four cracks are visible at 993 MPa, but during the loading, the crack number 2 and number 3 present a more important growth at 1470 MPa and 1,602 MPa. A porosity is present near the crack number 2 in the red rectangle, and if we look inside, we can see a crack at 1,407 MPa, then 2 at 1,602 MPa. A fifth crack appeared at 1,638 MPa and seems to reach the porosity. At 1,752 MPa, the crack number 2 is the cause of the failure of the sample, but the evolution of the fifth crack evidenced the influence of the surface porosity, as it seems to be guided by the four porosities circled in red. For the smatted sample, what is particular is the material aggregation around the end of the notch, due to the mechanical treatment. These overlaps are evidenced in red rectangles at the initial state, and what is interesting is that the two cracks presented appear in this location. The first crack at 1152 MPa is in the overlap on the left, and compared to the as fabricated sample, the treatment delayed the apparition of the crack. However, the sudden propagation of the crack number 2 at 1,829 MPa leads to the failure of the sample, but there are not any visible porosity at the surface to determine if it has an influence or not. Instead of this kind of defect, the other lab may have created a stress concentration at the intersection, increasing the probability to create cracks at the surface. The behavior of the cracks showed during the loading leads to conclude that it may be possible to predict the location of the cracks by observing the overlap. However, other tests should be conducted in order to validate this assumption. To conclude this presentation, we have seen the crack initiation and propagation at a local scale, thanks to the institute and cell test under the SEM. 
the influence of smart treatment has been evidenced through the different images. The nanogauges gratings have been applied on a rough surface, ensuring a robust procedure. Quantitative information can also be extracted from nanoparticles displacements. You can find references used for this video after this slide. That will be all for this presentation. Thank you for watching.